<laughs> this is thick. She's thick. Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. So today's video is going to be my makeup favorites for looks for my everyday uh, makeup looks or just looks like I have on now where it is not necessarily like boom like glam but it is like a step up from an everyday look. I pretty much use these same products. In my last video where I did a vlog when I did my makeup in the beginning of the vlog, I believe I used most of these products but the ones I'm going to show you today are ones that I just stick true to. Some of them you guys have probably seen multiple people talk about but with me I'm just at that point where I'm just using the same stuff that I know works that I know is going to get right with my skin and I'm just going to recommend a few things that I think everybody should kind of have in their staple makeup collection. So if you're interested in seeing those things, then keep on watching. Um, also, this sweater, this is one of my absolute favorite sweaters. I got this last season from, well, it, I originally saw it on ASOS and it was sold out. So I started to look to see if the actual brand sold it on their site and they didn't. And so I looked up, um, I think I did like a Google image search and I found it on Poshmark and someone had actually just purchased it, still had the tag on everything my size. And I was like, oh, I have to buy it. She actually was selling it for a really good price. Like I said, it was new with the tags and everything. So I ordered it. I love this sweater. What drew me into it was this slit detail right here on the sweater. I really love that. And the only thing about it is that it's made of mohair. And it kind of is a little tad bit itchy, but it's still cute, so I'm still going to wear it. But yes, if you're interested in this sweater, I'll see if it's available anywhere else. But like I said, I got this last season, so it might not be available. So where do we start? Where do we start? So I think the best thing to start with will probably be like, a, you know, skin prep, so primer and all of that stuff. So the primer that... I use and all of these primers are basically empty because I use them on a regular basis but I will start with the one you guys always hear me talking about which is the Smashbox the original photo finish smooth and blur primer what can I say about this it's just so good it really like fills in those pores and it just makes your skin so soft and so nice to apply foundation to it I don't think I'll ever not keep this in my makeup collection. It's just, it's just a really, really good. And I find that this works on all skin types. When I've done makeup, this was one that I've used a lot on just other people in general. And this, this primer is just really, really good. Another primer that I really like, and which you'll see is basically empty. I have to get another one. I'm actually going to the mall today to try to see if I can get a few more items. I'm not into like hoarding makeup anymore. Like I just keep what I need and that's it. Which, you know, a few years ago I would have been just buying, buying, buying. But this primer, the Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Primer. As you can see, I have literally opened and scraped in there. This is a really, really good primer. This one, I think it's a little more pricey than a Smashbox. Or they could be around the same. I know they're all of these primers that I'm going to mention are actually pretty pricey to be honest, but they are really, really good. This one, it is actually very moisturizing to the skin as well. And I find that when I use this, it's, it always gives me like a nice like grip for my foundation. I've tried the Milk Hydro Grip before. I'm not a big fan of that. It does what it's supposed to do in regards to being more sticky for the makeup to adhere to, but I just, I wasn't a fan of it. I found that it gave me like um, little bumps or texture and I didn't like that. This one gives you a nice soft grip. Like when you put it on, you can feel it, but it's not causing texture on your face. So if you've been thinking about trying this one, I definitely recommend that you give it a try. And the last primer that I'm going to talk about is the Bobbi Brown. This is the Vitamin Enriched Face Base. And as you can see, I need to buy another one of these. I literally have scraped this to the bottom and this was actually the smaller one. I'm gonna go ahead and buy the bigger one because I really do like this. Just because it's, it's not just a primer, it's also skincare within it because it's a moisturizer. So uh, two in one. 
and I really like this one. It, it smells kind of citrusy to me, almost like orange, but it's very light, very subtle. And I feel like this is a good primer for just like, I, normally when I use this, I don't use a, like a, a moisturizer on my face because I don't want my face to be super oily. So I can always just go in with this and that just gets those two steps knocked out all together. But if you're thinking about trying the Bobbi Brown primer, I would recommend this one out of all three. What I think would be the best for everyday use is probably the Smashbox primer. It's just good, you guys. This has been out for so long and it's just really, really good. Like I've even worn this on its own without any makeup and I find it just to be a really good primer. So if I had to choose out all three of those, even though they all are really good, I would definitely choose the Smashbox primer. Next, I'm going to go into foundation. So I'm only featuring one foundation today as I have other foundation videos on my page. It's about two or so. And even when I did my makeup a few videos ago, I used the foundation. But typically, this foundation, this, you guys, it's just, it's just the oldie but goodie. And I won't ever have anything bad to say. I am still a matte girl at heart. Fun fact, my first makeup or my first trip to the makeup store, my mom took me was to MAC and she purchased me, what did she get me? I think she got me eyeshadow. She got me two of the single pot eyeshadows and what else? Why am I not remembering? She bought me like two eyeshadows and something else, but she started me out in MAC, so I'm a, forever a MAC girl at heart. Even though I love going to Sephora and Ulta and all of that, MAC just, they just get it. They just, they just get it. But this is the MAC Studio Fix Fluid right here. And I am in the shade NC50. And it's, I can't, I can't hype this foundation up enough. It's just a really, really good foundation. And what I love about MAC foundations is that you don't need a lot to have a flawless coverage. Like I literally will take it, take a brush and put some here, 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 and here, take my brush, blend it out, and that's all I need. Now it is, of course it's blendable if you want more of a fuller coverage, but I'm fine with, you know, like that light to medium coverage and MAC just get, they just get it. So I, I'm not recommending any other foundations right now, but this one, I definitely think if you haven't tried a MAC foundation, I think for sure that everyone should at least try MAC. It's, it's just it's just good. Like, I don't have any complaints about it. I have it on now. I've been wearing it for just, I've been wearing my foundation for years and it's just one that I'm never going to get rid of. Next is going to be concealers. So I have three different brands for my concealers. And let's see, the one that I'm going to talk about first, but I think I'm going to do the NARS. So once again, these are in need of a uh, replacement. I have been really just making sure I get down in there and scrub because, not scrub, but dig to get the product out because it's, it's makeup is just getting to be expensive. Not gonna lie. So I'm like making sure that I get my use out of the products. Whereas though before I used to just be like, oh, I can't, I don't feel like scraping it, throw it away, get a new one. I'm not doing that no more. And don't feel bad if you're doing what I'm doing because like you bought it and you wanna use all your product and get your money's worth. But anyway, these are my NARS concealers and I think they're like creamy radiant concealers or something like that. Sorry, I, I just pick them up so much I just go by my NARS concealers. But they're the most popular ones of course and this is in the color Amande and in caramel. So Amande is my shade where I want to cover imperfections and then the caramel is when I want to highlight. Very creamy, very full coverage. Uh, well, it can be like a medium to full coverage, but they just are a really good formula. I've never had a problem with them creasing or anything, um, but that also just depends on how you are prepping and setting your makeup for the creasing. But I personally have never had an issue with NARS concealers as well. And so these two, I, you know, they're my favorite. And once again, no complaints on these two. The next concealer that I use is more so for highlighting and this is the Tarte Shape Tape. Hence why I bought the little one because I only use it for highlighting. I, and 
Shape tape is like just super thick. So you really do not need a lot of shape tape when you are concealing. It is very thick, very full coverage. And I literally take it, I'll get the, the concealer out and I'll put two little dabs here and then maybe one here and I just go ahead and blend it in. Sometimes I don't even let it sit. I'll only let it sit if I'm looking for like a really, really, really full coverage. So I would recommend tape, shape tape if you, you know, you really like that full coverage under eye. Like imagine getting this in your actual concealer shade and you just want to really conceal the under eye. It's going to get you right every time. And my last concealer is the Huda Beauty. This is the Full Filter Concealer. This one actually is a newer purchase for me. Um, and this is in the shade Crumble 7.1N. And I like this, film, uh, this concealer. Now, if you aren't new to my channel, you know that I used to stand by um, the Huda Beauty Foundation. Um, she changed the formula, but it was the... Um, what was the name of the con Oof, I have to look it up. So it was the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Foundation, but it's the old formula, not the, the new one. The old formula, it was just good. Like everybody that I put onto that foundation, they loved it. And unfortunately when it was going out and she, she was going to stop producing it, I did not get my shade because I was like, oh, I don't need it. I have so much, I had so much of it. It was still practically full and that, foundation is full coverage. I would say that one is comparable to MAC but much thicker and you need even less of that than you would with MAC but it was a awesome awesome formula. If I were to start in looking for another foundation or trying to be on the market for another foundation I will go back to that one and try her new formula but this concealer is just it's good as well like I think once again going back to compare all of them I think they all are really good but if I had to say which one would be like a staple to have in your collection it's gonna be NARS for me. I think NARS is just good for every day and it's good for when you want to have a more glam look too these other two once again are great i use them both but if you're asking me to choose between the three brands i would definitely say nars gonna get you good every single time and for contouring i don't think i can fairly judge this because i'm not using too many different contouring sticks i just found like a foundation that was darker and it was a stick foundation and I just picked this up and this one is Thread in Deep Neutral 220 and sorry about the messiness of it. I actually found this in Target and it worked for me so I just used it. Is there anything super like special about it? No, it works to contour and you know like that's what i use but i think that any type of cream contour will do um, i typically if you see this one this one is a lot more cool and i typically try to use warmer contours they don't they don't look good when i'm trying to contour so i have to do something that's a little more neutral or like cool because that's what brings out that shell to give me that contour so this one is definitely good but like I said, it's not a matter of recommending a contour stick. I feel like anybody can find a contour stick. But this is just the one that I use. To set my foundation, of course, if I'm using MAC foundation, I'm going to be using my MAC Mineralized Skin Finish. And this is in the color Dark Deepest. And I really love this powder. It's just really good. Sometimes I even wear this on its own. Like if I'm not wearing a liquid foundation, I would just wear it on its own or when I'm doing like just a powder face um, during the summertime. This is just really good. It's a really nice coverage. It's super natural. And all my girlies that don't really like liquid foundation, but you just want something to just give you a little like, you know, more of a flawless look, definitely try this powder from MAC. 
Next is my setting powder. So I typically would use Beauty Bakery and I actually have Beauty Bakery right here, but it wasn't presented today because I haven't been using it. But for a cheaper alternative, Beauty Bakery and uh, their flower powder, this is in Cassava Yellow. Really good powder. Like I used this for years and I haven't had any issues out of it. I think I just stopped using it because I wanted to have i just wanted to try a different powder i tried the laura mercier powder and at one point in time that was making my under eyes crease and i had never experienced that before so i stopped using it and i went and i was just like well i know i love beauty huda beauty products before why haven't i tried this powder and so i was asking one of the girls in the store i was like well how do you feel about this powder and she was like what she was like you haven't tried it and i was like no she was like you're gonna love it and so I just picked the one I like more of that yellowy undertone with my setting powder so I got the Huda Beauty Easy Bake and this is any color blondie and not only does it smell good but it's just a really really good powder it's really really good so I've tried this with more glam looks and I've tried this with everyday looks the only thing I would say is that if you're using this for everyday makeup look don't be so heavy-handed with it so on my look today i did more of a baking method whereas though a more light foundation i will take a brush and just kind of pat under my eye and you know like my t-zone and everything and not let it set because it can it definitely can get there with the heaviness but not cakey like just heavier so i definitely definitely like this powder and I have been reaching for it and I will say that this is my favorite. She has replaced Beauty Bakery but I still keep Beauty Bakery just just because I guess for sentimental value but uh, I'm, I really like the Huda Beauty setting powder and would definitely recommend this if you were ever wondering you know what it was like I'm telling you it's good so go ahead and try it if you were looking to next is a bronzing powder and we're just gonna get straight to it Bobbi Brown in deep this is a nice bronzing powder and this is just like first of all the packaging I just love it's super sturdy it has a mirror on it really nice and it's just a nice it's just a nice powder are there other bronzing powders that you can try yes I think before I was using the Morphe bronzing powder for a long time. Like I had that powder for years. It was it was huge. And I was just like, it's no point in me getting rid of this. Like I used it until it was gone. Um, but yeah, that was a Morphe contouring powder. And I think after I was done with that, I just went out and got this one. And now I've been using that. I feel like contouring powders last a lot longer because you're only using them on the perimeter of your face or, you know, on those those small areas in the middle of your face but they last pretty long so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have this one a long time but really good if you're looking for a Bobbi Brown contour powder or you just wanted to try something new I think this is a really good powder next is for blush so this one is a cream and powder blush and this is the Patrick Ta she baked cream and powder blush duo and these are just the powder is more uh, of a lighter pink and then the cream is more of like a mauve yeah I would say like more of a mauve color I like it is it one of the best blushes I've had I don't really know when it comes to blush I don't feel like I've ever, I've ever used a bad blush I feel like even when I haven't had blush, I will simply use a eyeshadow palette and get the same results. So do you necessarily need this? No, but um, it's, it's good if you're looking for a new blush, if you like exclusive like blush actual palettes or anything, this one is definitely a good choice and I will recommend it if you were looking for that. One thing that I am going to throw in that I wasn't really thinking about throwing in, but it makes sense to throw it in, is having a neutral eyeshadow palette. This one is very, very old from Morphe. Very old, but it just has all of those warm browns that you need. And I use this today, like I use it just when I want to warm up my waterline at the bottom or when I just want to throw something on the lid. It's always good to have a neutral palette and I think this one, once again, black girl, brown girl friendly, all of the colors you need. So I definitely like this one. 
but you can get whatever palette makes you you know that you like I, I just think that it's definitely good to have this just when you want to give a little oomph to your your look and everything it's good to have a nice warm eyeshadow palette I kind of skipped so I thought I was doing everything in order but then I just started picking up stuff but I skipped my eyebrow pencil so this eyebrow pencil I always use my last eyebrow pencil that I was using was the Too Faced uh, pencil the silver one however I didn't really have a problem with the next pencil I, I think I just wanted to try a new a new pencil so I went to the uh, Ulta inside of my local Target and I tried that Too Faced one and once again it's nothing wrong with it um was that Too Faced or was that Tarte? I'm sitting over here talking about this as a uh, Too Faced or Tarte. It's not either one of those. So the pencil that I was using in my prior video is a Benefit Brow Pencil. It's silver. And once again, I don't have any problem with that pencil. I just went back to my Odie Be Goodie. Next pencil, this is the Micro Brow Pencil and this is in Espresso. And it's just, it's a really good pencil. And I just always love the micro brow pencils. I don't like the pencils that have like the super fat tip. I don't like that. And I haven't been bold enough to try any of the liquid pencils. I haven't been bold enough to try those or pomades. Like I just like the, the strokes that I can do with the actual pencil. But I think that everybody can agree the NYX micro brow pencil is definitely a staple and I see a lot of makeup artists that have these in their kits so if you're looking for a nice brow pencil I would recommend this one for sure. I have two mascaras today so we have the Lancome Idol Lash and this is in wow I think this is just in like the darkest black because I can't even see what that says at the bottom so I have this one and I have the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara now this mascara I'm not gonna lie it's, it's really good like so I use this one because I do like that more full lash but sometimes I'm not gonna lie this one works a lot better I don't know if it's just my lashes I don't really have like the fullest lashes I think I just have like regular lashes they're just there this one it can work like when I put on lashes um, it does something but it doesn't do what this does I really like this one because I feel like it defines my lashes a lot more I like the curve of the wand and it just gets in there really well. But I do still use both. Like I said, today when I did my lashes, I used this on the top lash line when I use falsies. And this is, goes on the bottom normally. So if I had to choose between the two, I'm gonna continue to get this one because it's just a really good mascara. I would highly, highly recommend this one. Uh, Lancome just, they're just really good with makeup in general. Um, but their mascara is just, it's, it's top tier. And I also skipped out on the brows. It's just like, like I said, I'm kind of just going from what I see. But I did the brow pencil. And so I have this uh, e.l.f. brow lift. And this is like a, a wax kind of thing. It's just, it does what it says it is. It's a brow lift. So I'll do my brows and I go in with the spoolie and kind of freeze them up at the ends because I'm at a point right now with my brows where I'm letting them grow out. So they just look wild right now. So makeup has been saving the way that they look. But yeah, I think that this is a really good, 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 good brow lift. I had one that I tried from Benefit as well. This one is the Fluff Up Brow Wax. I really don't like this one. The first time I got it, it was a sample and I thought that it worked well, but then when I started using it or I got the full size, it's just like, I don't, I didn't really like it. I think it's because the, the wax or this isn't, yeah, the wax is white and you have to be careful because if you use too much, it can cause like a white cast on your eyebrows and I don't like that. So that's why I wasn't recommending this one, but if you want to try a wax that's more white instead of clear, this one was fine, but why pay that when you can get a nice elf brow wax and give you the same outcome. The next products are going to be setting spray. So I have been rotating between 
two or I have been using them together. So I have the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. And I feel like everybody has heard of this. Really good everyday setting spray. Then we have the One Size On Till Dawn Mattifying Waterproof Setting Spray. Believe the hype about this one. Like your makeup is gonna be set all day. It definitely is waterproof. I wouldn't use this, like when I go into the office, I use this one because it's just a little more like, um, I guess lighter. Whereas this one is like hairspray. So I don't know if you guys remember like back in the old makeup days where people would be like they set their makeup with hairspray. I never did that, but I can imagine that's how that felt with this one. <laughs> Just because of like the can that it comes in and everything and how strong it is. But this definitely does what it's supposed to do. So if you're looking for a good setting spray, the one that I would recommend for daily use is going to be the Charlotte Tilbury one. But I'm not knocking this one either. If you like that coverage, that I mean not that coverage, if you like to have your makeup just stuck in place and you wear it every day and you do a lot of moving and things like that, this one is definitely good too. But this one is going to be my daily pick. And last, we're going to go into lip products. So first I'm going to talk about my lip liners. Of course, MAC. So this one is cork. This one is a lighter brown. I found that, I guess it depends on the time of year because sometimes my lip gets darker around the perimeter um, because I have eczema. So I have a naturally dark line around my lip, but depending on the time of the year, it gets darker or lighter. So this one is good during those times where it's lighter. This is the cork. It is a nice brown liner. And then the one that I use any time of the year is chestnut. Hence, I have like two chestnut pencils and they both look like this because for some reason, like I always lose them and then go buy another one and then find them. So this one is the one I have on now and it's the one I typically wear. Chestnut, I feel like it's always just like the black girl staple chestnut and always having Velvet Teddy. Chestnut and Velvet Teddy for me, always a good combo. I actually don't have on Velvet Teddy today. I have on Carolina Herrera and this is the Blur Matte Lipstick in the color 741. And this is also like a, a nude lipstick. So I don't even know what made me want to try this. Uh, it wasn't something that was on my radar. I actually was walking through Macy's and I think it was around holiday time last, was it last year? I think it was because they were doing a bunch of like gift sets and stuff. And so I saw like a keychain actually, and I was like, oh, can I just get the keychain? They were like, well, we can't sell this keychain. You gotta get the lipstick. So I'm like, okay, I could always use another lipstick. So I was looking through the lipsticks and then we saw this one and she said a fun fact about their matte lipsticks is that they're not drying. With a lot of matte lipsticks, they can be very, very drying. But I will say, that even though I spent an uh, absurd amount of money just to get this keychain, it also has like a little blue tassel that connects to the bottom. But this was probably one of the most like unnecessary purchases that I can say that I had ever made. The only thing about it is that I can refill this with another tube of lipstick. So it's not a complete waste. But this is a really, really good lipstick. I love the coverage on the lip and it goes on really smooth and it doesn't dry out my lips and it's matte and I really like like if you look at it and you get to see it in person like you can tell it's just super like soft um, you probably can't even see it in the camera but it's like really really soft like yeah I can't explain it you have to see it but if you were thinking about trying any of the Carolina Herrera lipsticks I think this is a really good one I would recommend it it's really really nice and then for my gloss, what I have been wearing is the NYX Butter Gloss. You cannot go wrong with NYX, I'm telling you. If you are just looking at starting, putting on foundation, trying to find your way, NYX just has some really good products for affordable prices. And the NYX Butter Gloss, although I have multiple glosses, I have matte glosses, I have NARS glosses, I have different types of glosses. This one just is really good. 
like I always pick it up grab it it goes with every neutral nude lip that I that I put on and I have it on right now I love it and yeah I think that this is a good good gloss and that is all of the products that I have for today if you like any of these products I will be sure to link them down below uh just I guess if you want guys want a makeup tutorial using these products um so you can see like a maybe like a night look or how I would use these products for work or whatever just let me know in the comments down below and I'll be sure to give you guys that I'm not sure people are really into makeup tutorials anymore because I guess there are so many but I just wanted to come on here and tell you guys like what I typically use on a day-to-day -day basis because I know it's like always just so much being pushed out there and I feel like I would recommend if you find something that you really like just stick to that you don't have to have a bunch of different products to you know like have your makeup look great I, I, it always starts with skincare that's why i'm like super big on skincare but yes if you guys like this video then don't forget to like go ahead and comment down below and don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you guys in my next video bye